So for those of us who do not know who you are, who are you and what do you do? My name is Crooked Bow Joe. I come from Southeast Arkansas, a little town called McGee, Arkansas. Moved away from there at 14, been living in Fayetteville, Arkansas for 20 years, moved up here in 04, been up here ever since. Tell us about your childhood growing up in McGee. Ooh, we, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Uh, I was blessed, really blessed as a child. Uh, there was nothing that uh, I did not want or did not need up until the day my parents divorced. When they divorced, uh, long story short, uh, my world came uh, crashing down, but it taught me how to be uh, be thankful and uh, not take things for granted and then like after that happened, my dad moved up here to Fayetteville and I followed him. Have you ever faced any type of adversity in your childhood or when you was getting out and about, you know, when you was uh, young? What type of hardships did you face in your youth? I'm going to be real with you, bro. Uh, probably half the ammunition that uh, that keeps me rapping, I mean, between me and you, uh, I was I was bullied when I was really young, and uh, never fit in, and never ever really did. But I got to a certain age, uh, maybe 15, 16, a little older, and then I finally accepted the fact it's okay to stand out, and I've always held on to that ever since then, and I love that. That's what keeps me pushing, and I'll never want to fit in. I don't want to be blending in. I ain't part of no crowd. I never will be, and I'm okay with that. I'm part of the. I'm, I'm part of that select few, that 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 always will rep. Outcast, and I will welcome anybody else that travels that same road. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Going back to your name, how did you get your name? That's a funny story. Uh. My rap name originally started out being uh, Giovanni Cingolani, which later I gave my first son that name. And then my homeboy, uh, Loco, we were sitting up in the studio one night. I think we were about 16. And we and it, like for some reason, I had my ID out of my wallet. And where I used to live down in McGee, Arkansas, I used to live on 207 Crooked Bow Drive. That was the address. So he looked at it. Look back up at me, and then that's where the name originated. He just threw out Crooked Bow Joe, and then that's where it started. And I, I ain't even going front. Like I, I, I jumped on board. That's been that's been my name ever since. I mean, you can Google it. Ain't nobody got their name still to this day, and I'm pretty proud of it. At what age did you start creating music, and when did you start taking it seriously? <sighs> Oh, man, I started creating it about 15, yeah, about 15, about the same year I moved up here because my cousin Grand Duge got me into it. I used to beatbox for him like when he was at school, and he was, man, he freestyle. Buddy, let me tell you, like, I never will be able to freestyle like he does, but, like, he got me, he got me going. And then that's what, that's what made me really take off and, like, then I really didn't start like actually putting my music out there to the public till 2018. And like, man, that was what was that, 2005, 2006 when I started, all the way to 18. But I had to know that much knowledge to know what I was doing when I did actually publish my music. So I ain't even on front. Like, regardless if I make money off of it, like, like I've always told everybody else, it's so much fun. I ain't worried about that money. I just want somebody to relate to me. I just want to, I just want somebody to feel better about their life or their situation they're going through if they hear one of my songs. That's really all it's about for me. How do you feel about the local rap and hip hop scene compared, compared to how it used to be? How do you feel about it today? Oh man, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, Compared to the way it used to be, compared to the way it is now, obviously it's grown so much now. I was here, like I said, I moved up here in 04. I was here before 105.3, 101.5, all that, before all that come come about. So 
I got my I got my uh got my motivation from 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 the 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 day ones. Uh Dirt Road Records, Green City Smokers, High Minded Crew, like before all these radio stations come up here, like they we was doing little shows in uh I forget what the name of it was. It's right behind the uh strip joint on College Avenue. Like it is little red building back there. I forget what it's called, like music center, but like that's where they used to host shows. And like that's the biggest thing popping back then. And like like any shows that was popping, like it was elsewhere. It wasn't in Fayetteville. But like still to this day, I pay homage to them. I wouldn't be who I am without them. You know, like, but I was here before the radio station come about. So like even just seeing when they touched down, when they got their start. But let me tell you, like, I always knew in the back of my mind it was going to happen, but it's like seeing it come to fruition was really, really, really gratifying. It was, it was motivating. It was, uh, it like, it like, it like touched my heart and like I always knew it was going to happen. But seeing it and then jumping off and the way it is now, let me tell you, I wouldn't change a thing for real. How do you deal with negativity? Mm, how do I deal with negativity? You know what? I'm going to be honest with you, bro. If it don't help me grow, then I let it flow. Like, I'm a, you know what? Like, you can have your opinion, just like I have my opinion. And you, 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 you're, 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 it's fine for you to have that. You're, you're entitled to your opinion, just like I am mine. But, bro, like, be honest with you, I'm trying to go up. And I'm going to listen to you if you love it, if you don't drag on about that negativity. But I'm going to take a little bit of it that's positive, that's constructive for me, and add it to my repertoire and, like, help me go up. But the rest of it, it's going to go in one end out the other. Now, if it's positive, now we talk business. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't trying to do nothing but go up. I mean, all that negativity, I pray for you. I hope one day you can have a little bit more positivity in your life because I ain't doing nothing but trying to go up and your pessimistic ass need to go ahead and shut that down and get a little bit more optimistic because you ain't on that level yet. You need to get on that level. Speaking of, you know, going up, um, as this this question is going to be like an inspiration for people who may be in the same situation. Okay. Um, when were you at your lowest point in life like when did you hit rock bottom and uh how did you get out of that all right that's a long question i got a long answer and i'll try to make it short um in 2021 i dropped my first album and shortly after that i lost my dad which happens to be my best friend my boss like he meant everything to me and full disclosure i lost Everything, my mind, like like my house, my ride, everything, and that like I should have been stronger through all that. But after I lost all that, basically went on the run. Finally got caught up, went down for about a year, and started realizing what it's gonna take to be a man and what it's gonna take to bounce back. I needed that. That's that's my rock bottom. And like I'm I'm on my way back up. But I needed that. I needed to hit my rock bottom. And I'm grateful for that rock bottom. Cause I wouldn't be the man I am right now, sitting here in front of you without hitting that rock bottom. Cause that was a blessing, even though during that time, buddy, I saw it t totally different. But I needed that. So yeah, it's 2024, 2021, three years later. At rock bottom, I'm coming up out of it now. It's a deep hole, too. I ain't all the way to the top, but I'm almost there. What is your biggest accomplishment in life? Oh, man, that is a really, really big question. That's really tough for me to answer. What is my big, biggest accomplishment in life? I'm sure most people would say they're kids, and obviously that's, that's, yeah, that's some of my biggest accomplishments. Um... Hmm. I guess that would kind of go back to the, like just 
I guess I would uh, go back to uh, the last question you asked me and just kind of go off of that last answer, like where I am right now. Now, I'm, I mean, I I really have to think about that because cops, I mean, there's numerous ones, but I never saw myself losing everything that I had and being where I am. Like my biggest accomplishment is knowing what I'm capable of right now, where I'm at, and still having the few people, which mostly is family, that stuck by my side because I don't blame half the other ones for not sticking by my side. Just knowing what I can do when all the odds are against me. How do you feel about the notion of hard work? Like, you know, these days, this new generation of people who are coming up, these kids that are coming up, you know, they don't really like to work long hours. They don't like to do work that they don't like to do. They want to follow their passions. They want to do something. You know, if they're going to work hard and, and if they're going to spend all day working on that thing, whatever that thing is, they're going to work on something that they like to do. So they ain't, they're not trying to get no jobs they don't like to get. They don't want to work at McDonald's. You know, so they will if they have to, but sooner or later they're going to quit that. You know what I'm saying? Um, older generations, they like, look, Hard work is what you do. This is what you need to focus on. You Mold need you. Whatever you got, whatever you working on, whatever kind of job you got, you do that and you do it to the best of your ability. You make your money, you set it to the side and you save it. And you do, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what they taught us when we was growing yeah. up. Like, uh, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about the, you know, the comparisons between this generation of kids growing up now and then, the generation before us, how we grew up. Uh, these kids nowadays expect everything to be handed to them on a silver platter. They expect they shouldn't have to work for nothing. And that hard work molds you into the man you eventually become. Man, woman, whatever. You need that. It molds you. It, it shapes you. It, it makes you appreciate what you got at the end of the day. Not saying it's fun. It ain't never going to be fun. But it it makes you who you are, makes you grateful, like teaches you gratitude, teaches you how to have the right attitude. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to front. I didn't like it either. You know what I'm saying? Like like I just said, like, like I done been at the top and I done been at the bottom. You know what? I'm still coming up from the bottom. And it's a couple jobs I done had the past couple months I ain't real crazy about. But I keep that end goal in my mind. This going to lead to this, going to lead to that, and I keep that end goal in the back of my mind. And that's what I teach my oldest son. And he got that old school mindset. Now, my, my youngest son, I mean, we, we going to get there. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, that old school mentality gets you a lot further than that new school. Guarantee that. What is your relationship with money? Like, Ooh. financial li literacy and budgeting, saving, like... How, how, what's your relationship with money? Like, now what tips? The hard questions. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know what? I ain't even going to front. My daddy always told me, JoJo, go go and take a, go and take a money management class. And, you know, he was right. And I still ain't great at it, but right now I'm a lot better than I was because I'm impulsive. Like, I see something I want. And I've been grinding for the past two, three weeks, that whole month. And I, I see something I want. I'm going to go buy it, but at the same time, these past couple months, I pulled back more than I had, than, than I, like, used to grab. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's really, really, it's really, like, learn from your mistakes. I ain't never been good money manager. Like, even when I carry my kids out, even when I, like, they see something they want, it's like, I would rather buy them something and make them happy at the time than not be able to because that day has that, I've seen that day, but at the same time, I'm getting better saying, hey, no, like just, just for instance, like yesterday, my, my baby girl and my, my youngest son, they love playing this little game on the internet called Roblox. And she always asked me, hey, daddy, can you give me some Robux? I told her today, I'm like, you show me, you can be good rest, rest of the week at school, I'll get you some Friday night. And she, I guess she didn't understand, she's seven, so... I reiterated, like, you're going to have to be good the rest of the week. I ain't getting it tonight. So she, like, after she pouted about five, ten minutes, and I stuck to my gun, because I ain't going to teach her nothing if I don't stick to my guns. 
So she finally absorbed what I was talking about. And she know that she going to get it later on this evening because she actually was good last night. So as much as it pains me to say no, that's how you grow. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't great at it, but you know what? I'm getting better, and that's all that matter. You know? Um, What do you have to say to, uh, I'm going back to music, what do you have to say to local musicians who don't feel like they can make any money from music? Like, as far, as long as you didn't been in music, like, what kind of advice would you give them on how to go about their music careers? Link up with the right people. Peep game. Like, really, really listen. Like, link up with the right people. And... Study up on everything that you can, but at the same time, as much as you do all that, do not, and I repeat, do not make it your plan A. Make it your plan B. Like you you already got a job, don't quit that job. Keep working at this plan B job, this music, until you get it all solidified. Cause you know what? Like I ain't great at it. Like like I, I'm I'm 35 years old, and I still got a lot to learn. But for me, it's like, and I mean, you know what? It's really about how much you invest in it. It really is, and who you know, you know, and it's it's like linking the chain. It's like put your money into it, but don't break yourself. But it's not one of them things. Like for me personally, that I've got so far far into that. I can I can I can support myself financially doing it, which I would love to. But like 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 I've told you before in our little personal conversation earlier, like I do it for the love of it. And I would like, don't get me wrong, I'm slowly getting there. Yeah, I wanna make some make some turnaround on my music. I wanna make some bread. But you gotta study up, invest, know the right people, promo, like it's gonna take some investment. I want to say it's like throwing a penny in a wishing well. It ain't. But you know when you start out, it really is. How much you love it. That's what it comes down to. How much you love it. How much you love your craft. How much you willing to invest in your craft. It going to make or break the bank. It really is. How do you feel about, um, like, when musicians get in groups with other musicians, you have this one person in the group or maybe you know it, it don't have to be a group you can be just collabing with other musicians but you had this one person that want to steal all the spotlight you know what i'm saying from the whole collaboration thing um group collaboration whatever like you got this one person like how do you deal with them type of people and have you ever dealt with yeah people i like have that? i have you know what it comes to breaking point. Like, you give them a couple tries, a couple, like, strikes. You know what I mean? Like, everybody deserves a spotlight. But at the same time, if, you be like, if you're a collective group and you have a future being a collective group, and, and me, nowadays, man, when I was younger, I mean, I was a little apprehensive about approaching people and being really confrontational. But, like, nowadays, bro, I ain't. It's, it's a problem for me holding my tongue. I, like, I'm going to speak on how I feel, and it might come out grimy. I'm going to tell you how I feel. And if you don't like the way it's going to come out, then that's on you. But I'm going to tell you how I feel. And you cross that line with me, you want to spot like, I might give you that first pass, and if you look, I'm going to give you that second pass, and then I'm going to approach you like, hey, this is a collective thing. And if you feel that way, then more power to you. Go do your thing. But... I'm going to tell them, like, hey, if you ain't about this group thing, like a collective goal, then keep it pushing. And like I say, I hope you feast at your table, but it ain't going to be at mine. Keep it pushing. I ain't got nothing love for you. But then we'll see where that gets you. Because that, that 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 greed and that selfishness, that'll eat you up. When you ain't getting that no more, like a like a dried out prune. You ain't going to have no, you ain't going to have nothing left. You got like a deflated balloon. I ain't going to have no air left. And I'm going to be sitting there saying, like, look, I told you so. I still love you. But I told you so. 
But I'm okay with being in a group and being by myself. That is what one thing that taught me, being, being, being by myself. Not even that. It's just I'm okay being by myself because it was a lot of work, like, keeping a group together. Because it was all up to me. I ain't trying to be in charge of all that. It's enough for me to keep all of this going. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot going on, bro. I'm a lot to handle myself. I done been down that road. Then it taught me a lot. But yeah, yeah. Long story shit, I ain't trying to be in charge of nobody. And I ain't trying to like, give no spotlight to everybody else. Like, we going to share it or you going to deal. How do you feel about um, the human race in general? Like, do you think that we all were meant to serve a purpose on earth? And if so, do we get too distracted from doing it? Because a lot of people walk around, they be sad, they be upset because they don't really know, you know what I'm saying, what they here to do. And, you know what I'm saying, everybody want to, you know, con contribute uh, contribute to the um, the collective experience that we live and call life. You know, everybody want to contribute to that, the happiness part to that. Um so how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel? Like, are we wasting our time here, like, doing minuscule type of things or, or what? It's like everything a learning process. I, I believe we do all serve a purpose. Now, when, when or if we do find it out, that's really up to us. Like, I believe we do. I mean, I ain't going to go as far as say we all got a destiny, but we all do have a purpose. If we find it, seek it, never find it, that's a whole nother avenue. But I believe, I believe we do. I mean, I know I'm like me, me personally, I know in my heart that I am put on this earth. At least most of me is meant to entertain. I know in my heart, you know what I'm saying? I made to put smiles on faces, talk my shit, you know what I'm saying? But like be myself. And like when I turned 30 years old, like it, it like, that's when that, that's when that switch went off and like, I have a hard time being not being myself and I never will hold back anything, but I know that's my purpose to entertain. And like, it don't matter what age you are. You're going to find it eventually. If you don't seek a little guidance, like, like meditate, pray, like you will eventually find it. And yeah, yeah. I, I believe we all do have purpose. Just all about timing. What kind of advice do you have for local musicians who don't feel motivated? Like motivation is a big problem with local musicians, man. They, you know, they, they don't, you know, sometimes they don't feel like spending that that money on whatever it is, you know, what I'm saying to promote to better their career, you know, what I'm saying. So, what advice do you have for musicians in that type of situation? I know what you're. I I, I know where you're coming from. See, like, like anybody that I know that writes music, you know, like I'm. I know a lot of people that, that, that play instruments and all that. I'm not sure if this this pertains to them, but like I go in and out of like like what do I call it? A hot and cold phase. Like when when I'm writing, like I'm on for like six months and I'm really into it, you know? And like like even like like the song I'm about about to put out, like that's coming out in the next day or two, like I wrote that back in twenty twenty one. But I like six, seven months out of the year, I'm like, I'm hot. Like I'm on it. I couldn't I could not not write, you know what I'm saying? Like I I I mean I can't stop. But those other five six months, I'm in that cold phase. But that enables me to use all them songs I wrote in them six months before that to publish them or push them out. So me personally, like that six months that I'm on, I use them other six months to push it out, publish it. But I get it. Like like I went through I went through a year or two where I like didn't have no motivation. But it always comes back, like I, like we talked earlier. Like I couldn't, I couldn't stop if I tried. I really couldn't. Like it's just, just that much of a love for me. Like like yeah. I mean, if you if you you realize it, if you've been writing music. If you've been in music for about a year, wait till that that hiatus hit. You might not like it for about six months. It'll come back if you really love it, and you ain't gonna be able to stop. That's that motivation for me. If you stop long than two or three years and you really have no 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 motivation to keep going, there's your sign. You had fun while it lasted, and go ahead and get on out the game. So, yeah. Man, I'm going to ask you a question that's off topic. Okay. How do you feel about the 2024 presidential candidates? 
who fly, you not you might need to edit this out. I really ain't into politics. I really I like I could really give a shit less. I really like you know what? Them them uh stimulus checks back when Trump was in there, I really enjoyed them. And that's like that's like that's extent. Like I do not give a shit about politics. And I would reiterate shit <laughs> about politics. As long as that president is helping us better ourselves, no matter financially, economically, I don't give a fuck. As long as he's helping us better ourselves, I'm cool with it. And ain't trying to take our guns away. That's all that matter. That's all I give a shit about. Just help us do better. Yeah, the rich are already rich. Like, let's, like, help the poor man. I ain't tripping about the rich saying rich, but you know what? We all need a little something, something. I don't care who the president is. Let's all get a little piece of the pie. That's what it is. What's your opinion of rich people? Like, growing up poor, you know, we had this, this, you know, we had this stereotype about rich people. They got their nose up. They don't really care about us. You know what I'm saying? They got their own things that they, they just trying to make more money in and they, you know, basically live off our backs. You know what I'm saying? Um, the work that we do, they just live in our foot. Because when you go and you get a job, wherever you get a job at, McDonald's, Walmart, you really working for the Waltons. You know what I'm saying? Like, they reaping the, the rewards. Like, growing up like that, you know, having that type of stereotype by rich people, knowing that in the back of your mind, does it make you hate rich people? Do it make you dislike them, or or do or does it make you want to be in a position, work hard to be in a position one day? I want to know how they got in their positions. Therefore, they need to educate us poor folks how they got there. I mean, that's the least they can do. I don't want that any money. At least lay down, lay down the yellow brick road. Let us travel that whatever path. Like obviously, if you was you was had the silver spoon. Like, growing up, and now I get that. But if you grind it for it, you know what I'm saying? Like, just just give us the blueprint. That's all I would ask. Because I don't expect no man to give nothing to hand to him. Give me the blueprint. Just give me the blueprint. That's okay. And if you can do that, I ain't got nothing wrong with you. Even if you don't, let the next rich man give us the blueprint. Like, tell your homeboy over there, if your lazy ass ain't want to give us the blueprint, tell him to. At least give us a shot. I ain't trying to get nothing from your hand. Don't even hand me nothing. Give me the, give me the, let me follow the yellow brick road. Lay, lay the path out for me the right way and let me follow that path. And if I detour from that path, then that's on me. That's, that's what I can say. You know, I don't want nothing what you got. Just, just, just throw me a little advice. Arkansas music. Like, you know, there's there's a stereotype among Arkansas local artists, man. They rappers like they don't like to get along. Like Arkansas musicians don't like to get along. We're the rappers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Americanas and the country, you know, musicians, they they get along fine. Yeah. But it's the rap, rap side, hip hop side. Like they bro, we got this this stereotype about us, like we don't like to work together and come together. Lil Rock don't like to work with whoever, Fayetteville, Pine Bluff, whatever. Um, man, how you feel about that? Like selfish, this everybody out for themselves. Yeah. Like, like, look at it, like who actually don't come up out this state? Can you name more than more than five people on your hand that are really rocking? I mean, you know what I'm saying? And they could go backwards and like, hey. Like I just said, you lay that you lay that yellow brick road. Ain't nobody wanting to look out for nobody else because y'all selfish. Like, bro, it ain't nothing wrong with like sharing a little bit of your shine. I ain't never had a problem with that. I get why people do it, but at the same time, like in the end, what are you gonna gain from it? Like, wouldn't you feel like me personally? I would feel better in my heart when I go to my grave. You know, even if I don't make it, shit. I gave this motherfucker advice, this motherfucker, you know, and I did what I could, you know, but, you know, like me personally, I wouldn't feel right if I made it to the top. And sitting up at the top, you know, they say it's lonely up there. Even though you made it to the top, I ain't trying to be that dude, like, because, like, ain't nobody can hear me from up there. Like, hello, hello, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I, I want somebody to be able to, like, hey, I see you up there. 
Appreciate what appreciate the advice you threw me. Keep stay up there as long as you can. You remember how long Wayne was on top? You remember how long he was on top? Bro, I mean, what, close to ten years, like and seeing him come down from there, like, it just let, let me know like you only got so much time. Why not show a little advice, you know? Throw a little shine. Quit throwing that shade, bro. Like, come on, man. Go to your grave. You know you're going to feel some type of way. I know me personally. Man, talk to us about your upcoming projects, music, singles, any anything that you got coming up next. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, um, I got, uh, I'm, I just actually dropped um, a single about a week or two ago called, called By Happiness. Uh, it's a remix featuring uh, Kyle Collide, Kyle Cox. Um, he's my big homie. Uh, by the way, if y'all need a fresh cut, go holler at him. He he over there in Trendsetters. Go holler at my boy. He be cutting me and my son up. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, he 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 real talented. Um, I dropped that a week or two ago. It's available on all digital platforms. Um, I just recently uh actually uploaded my latest single uh today as no yesterday as a matter of fact. So it's called I Got Me featuring my cousin Grand Duje and it sh it should be out any day now. So uh be on the lookout for that. Um like I said, I mean like I really took a hiatus since twenty twenty one, but like I mean from here on out I'm dropping singles every other week. I mean and I ain't got no stop sign in my future. So like I mean, yeah. No album but but singles from here on out. You can Google me, C R O O K Y B O J O. I'm available on any digital music platform. You can look me up, Google me. I'm the only one that's gonna pop up. All of my singles will be on there. Just go ahead and add it to your playlist, all all my tracks. I mean, I got quite a big catalog, you know what I'm saying? So yep, that's my latest one. So it's been dropping any day now. But yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. It, it pretty much embodies the mindset I have. I mean, I didn't make it here by myself, but at the same time, I wouldn't have made it here by myself either. So, yeah, I got me. <laughs>